Recently, Ariel, Simone, and I spent a few days visiting NASA Ames Research Center, located right in our backyard in the heart of Silicon Valley. Ames has been around since 1939, and it's where NASA conducts research and development of the technology and science used in missions ranging from small satellites to rovers to crewed flights. Ariel actually got her start in space exploration by unexpectedly landing a job at NASA Ames a few years ago, working on a program whose mission was to connect communities inside and outside of NASA to collaborate. She was really excited to show us some of her favorite parts of Ames and explore some areas she'd never seen before as well. For Simone and I, this first visit to Ames was our chance to get a sense of what goes on in this massive facility that spans over 200 acres, its history, and how they're working on the future of space exploration. We were especially curious about the big testing facilities inside Ames, the kind of larger-than-life machines, simulators, and testing rigs we've only seen in documentaries and movies. One of those is the Vertical Motion Simulator, a 10-story tall tower with a multi-axis computer-controlled gantry that can accurately recreate the experience of what it's like to command and pilot a spacecraft. Astronauts have used it extensively in their training from practice shuttle flights to moon landings. We were keen to try out our amateur astronaut skills and see if we could steer a lunar lander onto the surface of the moon without crashing. I'm Samantha Garud, and I'm on the outreach team here at NASA Ames Research Center's Simulation Laboratories. And so what we're standing in right now is part of the simulation labs where we can do flight simulation and uh, all aspects of it, um, from the pilot's point of view to uh, the air traffic controller's point of view, and and really get a full picture that way. So so there are a couple main reasons that we simulate, and uh, one of those is uh, economics. Obviously, it's a lot cheaper to build a plane in simulation uh, as opposed to creating it in real life uh, and then um, being able to test it afterwards. Uh, so uh, so there's a safety factor too. So the two main reasons would be economics and safety. The yellow brick road, but to science. So as we're walking down this hallway uh, on the sides, you'll see these posters, and they show several of the research studies that have been done here over the years. And then going towards the past, uh, what used to be uh, the, the visuals before we had a you know, really good visual system that we, we today we, we have, um, this is a model board. And so these people are actually painting on here. And there's going to be a camera over here that, that moves along this model to actually produce the visuals. In real time, oh, yes. along the simulator. Yes, so along it's the simulator. completely analog relay of a map painting. All right, so now we're entering the vertical motion simulator area. And the walkway I was talking about. <laughs> and that is one of the cabs. And the cab that's on there right now is the lunar lander cab, as I mentioned. And so this was used in uh, studies back in 2007 and 2009 and what we're hoping is that for the future studies that will be part of the Artemis mission that we may use this and and build on that research going forward. Simone, Ariel, we're inside the motion simulator. It's super exciting. So they're going to let us actually try and attempt a lunar landing. <laughs> I feel like this gets Simone one step closer to space. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, I mean, considering that 350 astronauts have been through here, I feel like some of it should rub off on you. Yes. But also, I kind of just want to crash things. Uh, You're no, not going to try for a, a successful landing? I just want to have, I, I, I want to feel it move. <laughs> Make it move. I sound like a kid at a zoo. Like, Dad! Make it move! Or you want to get your 50 cents worth of oh, yeah, totally. motion simulator, yeah. right? Yeah, that means you have one shot here, and why use it for anything else than to fuck it up? So what you'll see here are what we call the flight director. So these uh, magenta lines that are going over here and over here, you're going to try to keep that, that, that little black dot in the center of these two lines. So that's your aim. So you're going to try to take this over to here. I'm so glad she's going first. <laughs> Simone has no idea that we can hear what she's saying and also see how she's performing in the simulator. So this just officially became a contest. <laughs> I'm going to lose. 
there she goes. Oh my god. Yep. Oh, you got Earthrise. I got Earthrise. Oh, my God. Earthrise over on the left, I have never seen that. <laughs> Wait, I, feel, I, don't, I don't know how to, it's not doing anything. I think they interested. They're not flying, don't worry. Uh, okay. It's about just giving you a view. I'll reset. So I've been here a bunch of times, but I've never That's actually gotten to fly the vertical motion simulator, so I'm pretty psyched right now. She landed. Oh yeah! Simone is. On your touchdown, so so that that's really good. All green numbers. Yay! Uh, you ready to go in? Yeah. I want to do our team proud. And America proud. Very, oh, there it goes. There's the Earth. Oh, you got the Earth rise. <laughs> Making her nervous. <laughs> Yikes, is not what I want to hear. Okay, well, I'll let you know we're at 100 feet. You didn't hear Aldrin say yikes. <laughs> No, he's like on for a little journey around the moon. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm at 70 feet, closing in. <laughs> oh my God, he's going so fast. I do not think Norm is winning the contest between the three of us. It was a contest. <laughs> That's what we said. <laughs> I hate when you lose contests, you didn't know you were participating in. Made it back to Earth. Landed on the moon in a skirt. Simone did the best of all of us. Clearly the most promising astronaut candidate on our team. My more aggressive piloting style didn't help with the landing, but let me appreciate the kind of realistic forces the VMS was able to simulate by operating in such a large space. Something more realistic than any theme park ride or virtual reality experience I've tried. Another really fantastic simulator at Ames that we got to see is the 20G Centrifuge, named for its ability to give you up to 20 times the force of Earth's gravity. You've seen this kind of machine before in sci-fi. A subject gets strapped in and spun around the centrifuge at incredible speed to test their endurance and cognitive abilities under simulated G-forces. Sadly, we didn't get to ride this simulator at speed, but we did get to enter the centrifuge chamber and get up close to this incredible piece of machinery. We are inside NASA's 20G centrifuge. We're humans in the human centrifuge. And this is one of those iconic pieces of equipment you see in, in kind of space films where astronauts in training have to sit at the end of a centrifuge and get G-forces simulated on them up to, in this facility, humans up to 12G, but this can actually go simulate, what? 20G. 20 20 yeah. Gs. That's is, nuts. Yeah. yeah. Apparently it gets really, really hard to breathe at like four, because it compresses your chest and you're kind of just like panting. So the perspective you have right now is where a test subject would be. And for something like 4G, this, whole, this would rotate at 20 revolutions per minute which but, is fast. But they would flip down the door so you wouldn't have to look at the room. Yeah. Yes, yeah. thankfully, thankfully. Yeah. Very nausea This is an amazing <laughs> piece of equipment. Um, and we're just lucky to be here. Yeah, and it's just being human powered now because <laughs> it's down for maintenance. So we're yes. having people help push us back. <laughs> right off camera. Yeah, yeah. I, I was lucky. I was sort of the main test dummy for a lot of this work. And so I got to go up to six Gs. And at six Gs, you're six, six times heavier, but your chest is really heavy and you're just focusing on breathing. So it, it's every breath is, is really difficult to take. And so you're just hoping it's done pretty soon. 
So, so small breaths. Yeah. Breathing. So that was on a, a long time ago. It was on a pseudo Mars mission. So the tests we did were for Constellation, and th th that was the Ares rocket and the Orion capsule. And so they were going to go up to four Gs, which is enough. <laughs> the cool thing about this is that I don't know if you, a lot of the military centrifuges and a lot of the other human centrifuges, you have this little cockpit you sit in. This is a giant room. And so you, we can do whatever we want in this room, including moving it closer or farther or what, whatever we want to, to do our experiments. So actually, for, in one experiment, they had people live in here with the toilet and everything to measure long-term effects of low G levels. So it would move at like one point something, two G. Yeah, yeah. So no, I don't remember Dr. Poe. Sustained. Yes, yes. yes. How, how long would that session or that test? Are they, I, they went a couple of days. Whoa. Yeah, that's why they had a to toilet and everything. I don't know the details of that, of of those studies. That was, that was before my time. A rocket is just a long tube, right? So it's just a giant tube. And just like a flute, it has a resonance frequency. And so it turned out that the resonant frequency of the Ares rocket, which was the previous one to what we have now, um, was 12 hertz. And it turned out that as the fuel burnt, it shedded, you know, it's going to burn unevenly. And it, it started oscillating at 12 hertz. So it was shaking the rocket up and down at 12 hertz quite a bit. And so it was one of the number one constellation risks. And so they asked us to see what would happen. The crew was very concerned about what they'd be able to do while, when, they were, when they were launching. And so what our job was, was to um, do some experiments to see if they, if they could read the displays, operate the controls and stuff. How's it feel, Norm? I mean, claustrophobic a little bit. Are these, <laughs> these panels here are displays? Yeah. So this is for testing so, visual acuity? So we, let's come over here. So we shut this, and you're perfectly comfortable, and it starts accelerating. And so the G vector now is here, right? Gravity's going here. And as you're spinning, right, it, push, it pushes G there, right? So, so what? she will show you what happens to your perceived G vector. And so what does he feel like? He, yeah. And it's just an amazing feeling. And we angled the chair so that at 3.8 G, which is what we wanted to test, you feel like you're lying flat on your back. This is awesome. Wow. We had just one more stop to make on our first day at Ames, and that would be checking out one of the most imposing structures on campus, the world's largest wind tunnel. What is that, Ariel? <laughs> uh, so apparently this is the largest wind tunnel, I think, in all of Earth. Um, this is, uh, we're looking at the air intake of this large wind tunnel, and this all compresses down into an 80 foot by 120 foot room, I believe, where they can test full airplanes and everything. Like this wind tunnel has gotten a whole lot of use by NASA, by commercial aviation, by everything. So what you're literally looking at is it sucking in all this air to power the wind tunnel through that intake right there. So this is the largest wind tunnel and it's pretty awesome. It's one of many wind tunnels on yeah. campus? Yeah, so there are multiple wind tunnels here at NASA Ames. Uh, this one gets used by both NASA and other industries. Uh, the other wind tunnels are more dedicated use for NASA. They're smaller, but they can do more dedicated tests for different uh, flight instruments and things of that nature. And it just has this really weird shape. Love it. <laughs> what is this? A wind tunnel for giants? 